late as the USS SJW has decided to march the entire comic industry full speed ahead to the bottom of the briny deep, I've noticed the readability of modern comic books is not its only casualty. Bafflingly, I've observed a bizarre rubber band effect, whereby otherwise perfectly normal, rational, sane fucking people are suddenly, unironically, indulging in the helium-huffing, hallucinopaste-fueled fucking fantasy that 90s comics should be comparatively reappraised as enduring works of genius merely misunderstood in their own time. And after their own time. And by even the most troglodytic titwank covertly photographing women's feet on the fucking light rail. But this rant isn't about movie, Bob. It's about one immutable fact we must all eventually come to grips with in our adult workaday lives. The 90s are not worthy of your nostalgia, least of all in comic book form. Not that these are hard and fast rules, just because the decade on the whole was dog shit doesn't mean there wasn't unbridled awesome on occasion. I happen to be wearing a shirt of one of them. There's no shortage of decent to damn good comics pinched out in the decade either, so let's not be deliberately fucking pedantic. Adults call this phenomenon hyperbole, and it may be kryptonite to any and all who subsist on the spectrum, but I am one hyperbole huffin' fool, and yes, you tiresome twat waffles, there are always exceptions. That said, what does the exception do but prove the rule, my pretties? If it assuages your autism, you can go ahead and plug your ear holes and pretend your favorite nut rag from the 90s is one of said exceptions. You ready? You plugged? You got your favorite episode of the Here's Why Shitty 90s Comics Aren't Actually Cock Shit Zum? What a Red Pill Podcast pulled the fuck up there, Jessup? Yeah, bitch, yeah. They're not exceptions. You've likely heard it before, but bitch, facts bear repeating. The 90s nearly killed the comic industry, which must have pissed Mark Wade off to no end. After all, that's his job. You've likely heard a truncated variant of the saga in several tongues by now. Spectacular comics in the 1980s gradually drove the direct market from strength to strength, coinciding with a speculator boom in sports cards and memorabilia. These twin terrible investments converge. Cue the overblown bullshit from the press. Comic books, one in a million monetary investment, 10,000% return on a five cent fucking purchase. Now, the media, of course, declined to mention that the only comics worth more than half a pubic hair were from before the big one, WW2. Or that the reason said comics retained their value is that the onset of the Second World War meant there was a premium placed on paper, and so the Shadow, Batman, and Superman books were procured by the government and consigned to fucking wood pulp for purposes of Nazi punching. The only reason the old comics were going for a lot of money is they were rare. Nobody pays a lot of money for something that's all over the place. They were a glut on the market. When the fans started to try to sell the books they were saving and found they couldn't sell them, they stopped buying multiple copies. In short, the fifth fucking X-Men relaunch was worth precisely the price printed on the fucking front. And then the industry made its fatal error. It steered in to the speculator skid, printing in hot pink, ultra rare, one in 10,000 foil fucking lettering, first issue, collector's item. And they did so absent the asterisk, informing readers that unless a fire flood or wasting zombie brain slug wiped out the multi-million copy print run, your comic was worth the square root of goddamn dick. And then the greed factor sort of set in every publisher, where, you know, they started producing alternate covers, special editions. The publishers were printing more and more and more copies. You had a lot of adults and a lot of little kids who thought they were gonna either get rich or put themselves through college on these books. As with all hurricanes, a hype, it blew the fuck through, irrespective of these niggling, inconvenient factoids. Lines lapped comic book buildings when Jim Lee and Chris Claremont relaunched The X-Men, which remains the top-selling comic book of all time to this day. And given the sad state of the industry, never mind print media, likely forever and in perpetuity as well. And 28 years later, I'm sure it's the centerpiece of many a collection, currently holding a steady, staggering market value of $3.95 fucking cents. But there was a bevy of bottomless money pits in the 90s. Batman Nightfall, better break out the bat credit card for that one, as today it's worth a whole six fucking dollars. Spider-Man Clone Saga, hold fast to your fucking piggy banks. But four entire dollars. Spawn number one? <laughs> Let me tell you something, people. We had two long boxes filled to the brim in the back room of the comic shop I used to work at. True story, we were specifically instructed by management to put just one copy out at a time to make people think it was fucking rare, and even then, the cover price was a princely 
$20. Not inexpensive, considering the story and artist aged like a basset hound's ball sack, but hardly the hope diamond there, fuckstick. We'll try to explain our thinking on how we're coming across and why we're doing overkill the you way You can it is. think and draw at the hey, same time? Yeah. He's got the biggest shoulder pads ever existed. It's like I this, figured he would. Chest. Let me show you something. This is a copy of The Death of Superman. Now, you might be wondering why I'm holding this backward. Well, I'm doing so because the front of the comic is autographed by none other than the series artist, Dan fucking Jurgens, One of the most famous comic artists of the modern era, in fact. Now I know what you're thinking. What heritage auction? What estate sale? What vile, profane tract of eBay did he locate this ephemeral fucking gem at? I'm gonna give you just a few seconds, and I'm gonna go ahead and let you guess. One, two, three. Here's the fucking bargain bin! I worked in a comic store, we were clearing out the four for a dollar bin, and there were fucking five of them. Your 90s comics ain't worth a shit, because that's precisely what they fucking sell like. And I'd remind you all, this shitty story was at least the partial basis of the script for Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Is the box office flop that followed coming into sharper fucking focus for you yet? And fuck you fanboys, the Snyder Cut would only make it worse, deal with it. But the only comment that could conceivably be labeled as the catalyst for the comic crash of 1993 was not clad in spandex, did not leap tall buildings in a single bound, Joe Biden's greatest abiding nightmare, apart from a Girl Scout convention with adequate adult supervision, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Now, I know what you're thinking. Fucking Turok? Really? <laughs> like, two full years before the fucking video game, no less? Why would anyone order too much Turok? Well, the early 90s offered much more than a mere cannonade of corduroy-clad cunt stains. It was also the apex of the variant comic book cover craze, particularly of the fucking foil variety. Silver foil, gold foil, and in the curious case of Valiant's Turok Dinosaur Hunter, an ultra-rare ruby red foil edition with verified signatures from the entire creative team, one for every fucking thousand or so printed. To make matters worse, early Valiant comics were already commanding princely sums on the collector's market due to one thing all the comics listed thus far do not enjoy. Rarity. You can guess what happened next. Comic shops were taking out second mortgages to buy enough copies of fucking Turok to procure the vaunted red foil variant. Supply soared past the piddly demand and within one year, nine out of every 10 comic stores shuttered their doors permanently with the industry eating a 70% drop in sales revenue by 1994. Ouch! In goddamn deed. But as bad as that was, the worst was yet to come. The comics were convoluted, moderately literate pablum in the early 90s. By the late 90s, they lapsed into outright tripe. Spider-Man was replaced by a clone, Batman broke his back and became a Franco-Belgian Beetleborg, and evidently being French is fucking contagious because Daredevil got brainwashed by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and renamed Laurent Le Vasseur, which somehow gave him his eyesight back thanks to French people powers. Superman got murdered and came back as a super mullet in an all-black body condom. The speculator market may have killed comics, but the 90s industry itself stuck the stake in and finished the fucking job. By the end of the decade, Marvel went bankrupt and was nearly bought by many people, one of whom we recently learned in my interview with his nephew Taj was none other than lifelong comic fan, Michael Jackson. Look, our contemporary comics crap, sure they can be, but let us not in our nostalgia allow 90s X Factor and the fucking X-Men relaunch, objectively banal bullshit with flat art and more perspective problems than a one-eyed fucking fighter pilot to blinker our perception of reality. That 90s comics are not merely shit. They are so shit that even their success was ultimately their failure. One from which, in many ways, they never fully recovered, might I add. Sure, we got Marvel Knights and a momentary uptick in quality and sales thanks to DC and Marvel handing reins back to genuinely talented writers in lieu of self-important comic art auteurs who made a 9-to-5 occupation out of being professionally impressed with themselves, ironically appreciating Rob Liefeld is all well and good between swilling soy lattes and sucking off the basis from Owl City, but let us not lapse so far into nostalgia overload that we we ever confuse this with fucking good. I was reared on Jim Lee X-Men. I even love it unironically in the worst guilty pleasure context imaginable. And I am telling you, friends, countrymen, 
It is crap, and so is my taste for enjoying it. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And while a nation may survive its fools, and even merely the ambitious, no industry can survive a repeat of Blue Raspberry Superman, Guy Gardner with nipple armor, and fucking Speedball. No one. No one. God fucking speed. Just a prisoner of the past. Don't know. Well, I think I, I've got to say seriously, which isn't easy for me to do, but I think it's very impressive that in a matter of 20 minutes, you guys could come up with something like this. I mean, bad as it is.